my adrenaline is pretty high at the moment. That might be because I didn't have any breakfast and then had three cups of tea and a brownie in quick succession, but also because I got my exam results today. And the good news is I passed. Woohoo! So that's great. That means that I will be going on to the physics undergraduate course at the University of Nottingham, hopefully, in September, which is amazing. <laughs> A few years ago that felt impossible, that I would have a place on the physics degree at the University of Nottingham. I mean, have you seen the grades that they require for you to get accepted? I have not had an A grade in my life. <laughs> um, so that is the first of many mountains climbed. I started making these videos to answer questions that I had before I started this foundation year and this quest <laughs> to become a physicist. Um, so I'm going to look back at over the year and answer, try and answer some of those questions that I had before I started. Firstly, you don't have to be a genius to study science. I mean, sure, it helps. But most people aren't geniuses, and yes, science can be hard, but so is anything that is worth achieving. Past me, who thought that you had to be a natural at physics and are natural at maths and naturally gifted and naturally smart and have a high IQ if you wanted to study physics or similar. Past me you were wrong <laughs> and anyone watching these videos that thinks that you have to be super smart in order to follow your dreams and study something that is perceived as difficult then it's rubbish. You don't. You have to put in effort and you have to be interested and that's kind of it. A lot of people also seem to focus on the fact that physics has a lot of maths in it. And yes, it does. I mean, I've only done the foundation year, which is A-level equivalent, and we have done a lot of maths. But I knew going in that it would require maths. And at school, I didn't hate maths. I didn't particularly like it. I didn't really want to do it. But, you know, the more I got into physics and the more I realised that I wanted to do a physics degree, the more I realised I would just have to learn to do maths. And now I really like it. For me, that was a lesson in almost forcing yourself to do something because the end goal, you can see the end goal, you know what's required, so you just get on with it. And maths is part of that. But it turns out that maths is really fun. So just don't be put off by the maths. It's okay. <laughs> Trust your gut and don't be put off by school. School works for a lot of people. School didn't work for me. Now that's not to say that I didn't like school or that I didn't do well. I didn't do amazingly. I was average. I kind of sailed by. But the reason why school didn't work for me in terms of physics is that everything I was interested in, in science, was boring at school. <laughs> physics was boring at GCSE. And the thing, the hook that got me interested in physics was astronomy and the universe. And I wanted to learn as much about that as possible. And it was covered in one lecture at school. School sucks for some people in that respect. And you know what, I thought that the fundamentals of physics as they're taught at school are boring, but it turns out they were just not taught very well because that's all we've done this year is the fundamentals. And they can be really exciting. So if that's your experience at school and you're thinking about going into the sciences now, don't let that hold you back. It is actually hard work. So what everyone was trying to say to me when I was younger and that physics is hard, it requires effort and so does the maths. It requires effort, but that doesn't mean that you can't do it. But it does mean that you have to work your ass off. And as a foundation year student, as a mature student, as someone who hasn't done GCSEs since 2005 when I did my reset, it was a baptism of fire. It was intense. I don't think I was fully prepared for that. However, I am an all or nothing kind of person. I need to be immersed in that environment and that is the best way for me to learn. It's basically sink or swim. <laughs> and I think I, it's fun. <laughs> so that is what I would tell myself in the past is be a little bit more prepared, but I don't know if I would change it because it worked well. It's kind of like throwing yourself into a foreign land and just learning to survive and you do. Give yourself a break and prioritize because there's a lot of pressure 
and it doesn't have to be that pressured. It is stressful and some stress is good, but I think I was very focused on doing well in every single module and every single aspect for the whole first semester and also catching up with the level that most people were on, which I was not. <laughs> So in the second semester, I kind of brought myself up to a good enough level and then was able to prioritise and go, well, you know, this maths module is really important, so I'm going to put a lot of focus and attention onto that. It's 20 credits, it's huge. And this module, or this aspect of this module, is five credits. And if I put in this much effort, I know I'll pass and I'll do well enough. But I don't need to give my absolute best for that because the time that would be required to do that would mean that I probably wouldn't have time to eat or sleep. So just working smarter, not harder, as some people say, and yeah, it kind of works. It is a lot harder to find temp work than you thought it was. <laughs> I mean, going into this, if anyone's watched my other videos, I self-funded this year, and I drew up a plan before I started of how I was going to self-fund. I was going to work part-time and bring in the rest of the money that I didn't or couldn't cover from my savings. I was gonna work for a month over Christmas and a month over Easter, and all of summer. I have a summer job. I start on Monday. That's great. That's sorted. Finding work over Christmas and finding work over Easter is... Christmas is nigh on impossible because most places close anyway. Easter, I got an internship which was great. So basically, if I could do it again, or if anyone out there is thinking of self-funding, find a part-time job that either can cover you consistently while you're studying, so 10 hours, 15 hours a week maybe, and then focus on getting a job in the summer. Christmas and Easter, it's just not gonna happen. I mean, Christmas, you've got exams coming up in January. Easter, you've got exams in May. Also, it gives you time to wind down because it's intense. So that's what I would change. Self-funding is ridiculously hard. And I've had a, a, you know, a decent amount of support. Now, there are a few people in my life that said, just go and do it, it'll work out you'll find a way. Life uh, finds a way. And it has worked out and things have fallen into place really well. Over Easter, I didn't know how I was gonna pay for the second half of my fees. I had no idea. I had a little bit of money here and there. I ended up getting a credit card with 0% interest over two years. So I've used some of that to help pay for my fees. I also got a bursary that I didn't know I was able to get. And that really helped, that was £2,000, that's huge. Next year I will be getting a tuition fee loan to do my degree part-time, so I'm not self-funding again. <laughs> what I will be doing is doing my three year, the rest of my degree, that should take three years, over four years, part-time, 75% of the course per year. And then I get a tuition fee loan, which uh, you are able to get as a second degree seeking student in STEM subjects from this September. So if anyone is curious about doing a second degree and trying to fund it, um, then I've put stuff, links in the thing down there. So, uh, oh, if you have any questions, ask. I am struggling with this one still, but I'm getting there. And it would be to believe in myself a bit more. Um, there's definitely a bit of imposter syndrome going on in there. You know, the better I do, the higher I aim, and then I feel like I could do better, I could always do better, and everyone, everyone can always do better. Um, but it's, I'm trying to take the time to actually appreciate and enjoy and maybe feel proud of the effort that I've put in. But I am proud of myself. I'm gonna, uh, after this video, I'm gonna go to the pub and celebrate with some friends, and that'll be great. Um, but it's like having the devil and the angel on your shoulder. You've got the angel telling you, you know, well done, you've done really well, this is what you've always wanted to do, look at you, you thought you couldn't do it, and you can, and, you know, the goal is coming, getting closer and more tangible, and then you've got the devil on your shoulder that sort of says, Ah oh, yeah, you got good marks, but it was a fluke and you don't really know anything and you know, the more you find out it feels like the less you know. <laughs> so I'm trying to shush the devil a little bit more and you know, it's really helped to talk to other people that are doing what I want to do and discovering that their paths to success are not linear. I mean, that might seem obvious, but I think 
the way we treat people we look up to is we just think, well, they got there because they are super talented. But actually, they've had setbacks the same as we've had setbacks. And, you know, people watching these videos might think, I started this course in September and look at me, I've done really well. That's it. You know, I, I wanted to start, I started and I did it. But there have been many false starts. You know, I've got pretty rubbish GCSEs. I tried to self-teach myself A-levels. I dropped out of my open university maths module because it just wasn't working for me and a little bit of me felt shame in that and felt like maybe I wasn't smart enough or maybe it wasn't right for me but a bit about trusting your gut is there was something inside me that just said no that's just not the right way for you to learn it's not what you want and I'm really motivated by people and it's being in the university being surrounded by the lecturers that's the best way for me to learn and you know being on a course with other people who are passionate about the subject so trust trust your gut and know that the people that you look up to have also had failures in their lives and it's just that ability to pick yourself up and, and carry on and, and sort of just trust your instincts and keep going that has helped me realize that everyone feels the same way so don't worry about it at least that's what i tried to tell myself <laughs> so that's it year zero is done <laughs> i made it i am going to spend the summer working i'm going to spend the summer enjoying weekends and not studying i'm going to save some money i'm going to spend a little bit of money and maybe you know in september i'm going to look at some flick through some books prepare myself for first year i'm going to make some videos over the summer if you have any questions, please get in touch um, or comment below and I will answer you. Like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Okay, I'm going to go to the pub now. Bye!